thank you for coming to the front for a children's story. It makes it a little bit easier for me to show you what I brought. Ah, there's a memory for some on the screen. How about some stuff for the big people? And it says, for a week, would you read it with me, Will? Because you have so many good readers right here. Look at the screen and tell me it's from Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. And it's got three, four dots because um, I didn't put the whole verse up there. And the next one says, guess what? I found this in, a, in somebody's trash. I was visiting my good friend, Glenn. And she saw, I saw this in her, in her um, little wastebasket, and I said, oh, Gwen, are you throwing that up? She said, yes, it needs help, it needs work. And I said, oh, may I have it, please? And she said, oh, yeah, I, I, was, I was done with it. Marty, give me another screen here. Just push the button on the corner. Thank you. So that's for the big people to see because they may not be able to see this. But I have to ask a question. She, she never can you give me program. another screen? Um, it's still can, on you, edit. can you tell me what this is? I'm can you tell me what it looks page like? Page, do, you, do you see? Oh, good guess. How about you? A mess? <laughs> a mask? I think it looks like a mess. Can you have another screen here? Please? All right. That was two. But the thing of it is, is that if I flip it over, give me another screen, Mr. Marty. The back of these kinds of things always look a little odd, don't they? I mean, a bunch of knots. But you want to feel it? Feel it. It's all. It's all about Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I turn it over, It's pretty, isn't it? Give me another screen up there, Mr. Marty. That is beautiful work. And that was in the trash. I'm going to be thrown out. And I was like, it's petty point. And she told me, no, it has to be stretched to go ever in a frame or on a pillow or anything. But I just thought it was wonderful. Would you like to see the front side now? Touch. See how, just pass it. We don't believe in surface germs. Anymore. <laughs> is that awesome? Now the lady that did this, she she would take a little tiny needle, and this is called Petapoint. This is really small stuff. And give me another screen, Mr. Barney. And this Petapoint on this side, yucky, right? Not too pretty. But on this side, what do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? It looks so springy. Give me another screen, Mr. Barney. There was a lady that used to come to our school. Her name was Corey Tenbu, way back when I was in university. And she had she would tell this poem. And it's on the screen. You can read it with me if you like. It says, My life is but a weaving between my God and me. I cannot choose the colors. He weaveth steadily. Oft times he weaveth sorrow, and I, in foolish pride, forget he sees the upper, and I the underside. Not till the loom, that's the weaver's loom, is silent, and the shuttle ceases to fly. You ever see somebody do weaving? It goes zoop and zoop and zoop. Not until the loom is silent and the shuttles cease to fly, Will God unroll the canvas and reveal the reason why the dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned? He knows, he loves, he cares. Nothing this truth can dim. He gives the very best to those who leave the choice to him. And that's from a man that wrote this poem, Grant Colfax, 
schooler. He wrote a lot of hymn, hymns and poems. And Corey Ten Boom used to quote it. Now, Corey Ten Boom was um, a prisoner in a German concentration camp where her sister died. And yet, when she came to our school, she would tell this story. Can you see this one? It says, although the threads of my life, she said, have often seemed knotted, I know by faith that on the other side of the embroidery, there is a crown. You see how messy that, that crown looks on the, on the back side? Just as messy as this one on this side. But on the other side, God is making a crown of life. Yeah. Oh, your life may have some things that you don't understand when it's going on. You say, I don't understand why it looks or feels like this. This is not my plan A. In fact, this is not my plan B, C, D, E, or F, or G. But God can work with plan Z if he has to. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Yes, never forget that. God will take what we do, and he's weaving our hearts. He's weaving a new creature for us. What is our next one to say? Well, you look at that crown, and that was the one that she used to hold up and show people. And I found it on the internet. James 1.12. Can you read this one with me? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. How many want a crown of life? Big people, raise your hand. All right. Well, we don't have a crown of life, but I do have the two memory verses here. And if you were to put some jewels in those crowns, it might be that one time when you give a DVD or some kind of uh, track to somebody and they read it, oh, it might be the one thing that somebody else gave them some other things and all of a sudden what you gave them turned their life around. Did you know that? I found a track in a telephone booth once and it made me really think, what are you doing with your life? other things he was doing. I don't know whether you have crayons here, but only do that if your parents say you can today, okay? Otherwise, take it home. Let's have a prayer quick. Heavenly Father, there's so much we want to hear from the sermon today. Please open our eyes and our hearts to the fact that you are the weaver. You're the one making our life go. And may we realize that when it's all finished, you are weaving for us a crown of life. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may go back to your seats now.